if I'm a Christian struggling with certain sins, is it my works that are the problem? And then I don't have enough room on the screen, but the second part to that question is, uh, because it says that God won't give me anything that is too big for me to overcome, doesn't that mean that I'm the problem? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's, that, that's the situation. Um, let, me, let me read a passage to you. Um, it's, a, it's a great one, and it's in Galatians, and it's in chapter 5. You're probably uh, familiar with it, but it, go, it goes like this. Um, this is um, in Galatians 5.19. It says, Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, and heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Let me, before I go on, let me make a point. It's practicing those things. It's the idea this is a lifestyle, okay? And it calls these the works of the flesh, and uh, then it goes on and gives a list. And then it says in verse 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we walk, live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another and envying one another. And so the answer to sin in your life is, uh, number one, um, you need to understand that um, when your flesh is in control, these are the works of the flesh. This is, this is the stuff that comes out when your flesh is what's in control. What we need to have is a situation where um, the Holy Spirit's in control. Um, man is a three-part being, and I'm using the gen uh, uh, generic for mankind. Man, mankind is a three-part being. Uh, the Bible says that we are body, that's the flesh, and we are soul, and we are spirit. And the soul, uh, generally speaking, would be the part of you that reasons and uh, the seat of your will, that kind of thing. The spirit is a part of you that communicates with God. And that's really simplistic, and um, uh, I'm being simplistic on purpose. So when a person gets saved, what happens is the Holy Spirit moves in and takes up residence in a person's life. But I still have my flesh. I still have my body. And it has certain desires. And flesh is not confined to the body. It can be my attitude and my heart also. Um, but I, uh, I still have my flesh. And so my flesh is going to battle against the spirit. Um, and in fact, in, in this passage, uh, in verses 16 through 18, it says this. I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit in the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you're led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. And so my, um, uh, my ability to overcome sin in my life is not going to come as a result of my self-discipline. My ability to overcome sin in my life is going to come as a result of my focus and the fact that I need to not be focusing on my mind that's, that's the, that's the um, psyche or, or the soul. Um, uh, it, it, it's uh, suka, uh, sukos in Greek. It's where we get our word psyche. So my mind is something that's important, but it's not what's supposed to be in control. And my body, obviously, is something that's important, but it's not supposed to be in control either. It's the, my spirit that's be, supposed to be in control through the power of the Holy Spirit. And so my spirit runs my mind, my mind and my spirit run my body, and that's the order that things need to be in. Otherwise, you're going to end up falling to sin all the time. And so the answer uh, to a, a problem where you keep falling to something as far as your flesh goes is, is the fact that you need to be walking in the spirit. And um, there is fruit that comes from that. And so works are the works of the flesh. Fruit is something that comes from the spirit. And... and Basically, this ties in with a bunch of, of other passages. Jesus talked about the fact that we're like uh, branches and we need to be connected to the vine. And uh, if you're not connected to the vine, what's going to happen is you're going you're to wither and you're not going to bear fruit. But if I'm connected to the vine, and Jesus is the vine in that passage, John chapter 15, then I'm going to bear fruit. And um, God's going to trim me so that I bear more fruit. And so there's a whole study that, that goes on in that, but... 
Um, the idea of being a Christian is not about doing works. It's about bearing fruit. And I have fruit trees. They never sweat. They never grunt. They never groan. They never work. Fruit trees don't work. What they do is uh, they just sit there in the ground, soaking up the nutrients, and then they do what comes naturally, and they bear fruit. And it's the same way in a Christian's life. If, I, if my focus is on the Lord, if I'm walking in the Spirit, and, and that's what it means to walk in the Spirit, if my focus is on the Lord on a day-to-day -day basis, hour-to-hour -hour basis, minute-to-minute -minute type of basis, and I'm walking in the Spirit, then I'm not going to start, I'm not going to do the works of the flesh. Or if I do, they're going to be short-lived. And um, what I'm going to see is fruit. And again, it's love and joy and peace and long-suffering and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and self-control. Self-control is going to be in there. Um, and against that, there's not going to be any kind of law. And, and so my walk's going to be a cool thing. And so if you're struggling in that, in that kind of area, what I can tell you right off the bat is that you're walking in the flesh. When that stuff happens, that's what's happening. You're walking in the flesh. And so get your focus in the right place. And the, your focus needs to be on your walk with Jesus. And it's the idea of I am just with... You know, if Jesus was in the room with you, you wouldn't be doing half the stuff that you do. And the, the fact is that Jesus is in the room with you. <laughs> you know? And so, you know, it's, it, it's that, kind of, that kind of... Uh, situation. And anytime I get in the flesh, it's because I've stepped outside of uh, that understanding and uh, uh, that that walk with God. It just needs to be close, it needs to be tight, and uh, you need to abide. It's the idea of don't move. So you got planted when you got saved. Don't move. Just stay with stay with Jesus. So, all right. If you guys have questions for Pastor Steve, we got about twenty minutes left. You can uh, well the best way to be post here on the show but there's the email and phone number up there for you if you have a question so let me kind of just unpack what you just said in my puny little brain mm -hmm. i see this battle obviously you have the works versus grace that a lot of christians argue about it and even get separated in theological division because of that right speaking of calvinists arminianism all that stuff yeah but you have this battle and i like what you just said about uh we should like i'm thinking like that's a t-shirt jc is in the room <laughs> because you know, uh, because you have the you have the idea that the philosophical idea we 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 know what we need to do, but I don't have the power to do it. So right. if I take the law and I go out and post a Bible verse, I'm going to keep this. I don't have the ability to do that if I don't have Christ. Right. The flip side to that, and and so a lot of Christians come in, you know, come to me all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And they're like, oh, thank God, I don't have to carry on this weight. Jesus is doing the work. But then the flip side to that is this, and I, this is what I see a lot, and maybe it's just my opinion, but there's like this laziness in the church where, like you said, Jesus is in the room, and they would never do that if he was, and they want to blame it on, well, if God wants me to do this, he's going to give me the power. Right. Or if I'm supposed to have this job, then, you know, it's miraculous, going to come to me. And they turn what should be a works-based faith by grace <laughs> mm -hmm. into this laziness, cheap grace, I guess, is how I would term it. Yeah. Does that make sense? Well, yeah, and, and that is a person who does not understand uh, what God wants in their life because what God wants in your life is love and joy and peace and long-suffering and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. That's what he wants. So can it be so, either or? Like they're not, they're, they're trumping the spirit in, the life, in their life or they're just flat out lazy and not doing the works of, of God? Well, you know, again, if you, if you recognize that Jesus is in the room, mm. you know, if, if Jesus is in the room, I'm not going to be sitting there going, well, Lord, if you want me to do it, then you, you'll have me get it done. Right. Because if Jesus is in the room, you, you go get up and get it done. Yeah. You know, what are you doing? And, and uh, again, the, uh, oh, the, the situation there is that we need to have a tight relationship with God. If you don't have a tight relationship with God, then you get into all kinds of situations or you're apathetic. James is a great uh, a great book for apathetic Christians. You know, faith without works is dead, and and so um, there are things that are supposed to be visible in a Christian's life, and if they're not visible in a Christian's life, there's a major problem. And you know, uh, earlier on, uh, an earlier question, uh, we were talking about um, uh, being involved in in uh, should the church be involved in politics and and I quoted from Matthew chapter 5, uh, where it talks about you're the salt of the earth. And uh, 
if the salt loses its flavor, it's good for nothing but to be trampled under the feet of men. And that's what happens with a lot of Christians because, uh, you know, it, it, it's like they're, they're uh, Christians in name only. And so you don't, you don't see any really real life there. You don't see any real fruitfulness. And the world doesn't see it either. And they mock them. Mm -hmm. They trample them underfoot. And um, that's the reason that that's going on. And so when, when I got saved, I, I got saved uh, and there, there was a purpose to my salvation. And the purpose was so that I would become something that uh, God wanted and that I would become a witness and I would be an ambassador for Christ while I'm here, and then that I'd go home to be with the Lord forever. And, uh, you know, there, there are rewards for that whole thing. And so there's a, there's a purpose in being a Christian. It's not to sit around on your, on your duff and, and have a nice life or something. Uh, that is not what God called you to. What God called you to is to have an effect on the people who are around you. And so, you know, the Bible talks about being lukewarm. And uh, Jesus in, in Revelation chapter 3 says, said, you're neither hot nor cold. I would rather that you were hot or cold. But because you're lukewarm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to vomit you. It's literally the word that's used. I'm going to vomit you out of my mouth. And so that whole apathetic thing is something that makes God sick. And uh, again, it's, it's not something that's supposed to be happening. Jesus will rather you be cold. You know, if, you, if you're going to live that kind of lifestyle, walk away. Because there's no point. And, uh, but on the other hand, Jesus told these guys to, re to repent and to become zealous. And it's a, literally a word in Greek that means to boil, uh, to get on fire. And so that's, that's what God wants. He wants somebody who's fruitful. He wants somebody who's on fire. And anybody who's going to actually follow Jesus is going to be somebody who's concerned about those things. And if there's no concern there, there's, there's a question as to, as to what's going on with your walk with God. And, uh, you know, what are you doing, man? What are you, what are you doing? And, uh, you know, just got to gotta get those things straight. So It's interesting, too, you mentioned the Church of Laodicea in Church Prophecy, if you believe that that's a layout of how the church goes, yeah. is specifically what we have now uh, in the times that we live in, which is what's on the scene during Jesus' second coming. Right. And what Matt's talking about is this, if you go through the, the seven letters of the seven churches in Revelation uh, 2 and 3, it looks like they correspond to the history of the church. And so the first letter, uh, the letter to Ephesus, would be to the apostolic church. And then there's a church under persecution. And then there's a church that begins to compromise. And then there's a church who's into full compromise. And there's a church that, uh, uh, Sardis is a church that had a name that it was alive, but now it's dead. And that's a situation that we have nowadays with a, a lot of um, uh, Protestant mainline denominations. And Church of Philadelphia, which has a little strength, and the last church is Laodicea, which is a church that thinks it's awesome. <laughs> you know, they think that that they're that they're healthy and wealthy and have need of nothing. You know, kind of the Ben Franklin Church. You know, that's uh, you know uh, healthy and wealthy and wise or something. And uh, what Jesus says is, "You're poor, blind, and naked." And uh, you know, so that's the one where he talks about the fact that they're lukewarm. And if that's the case, and that's going to be the state of uh, the church during the last days. And I think that corresponds pretty well. So.